Hello and welcome to a VO's journey, episode number 122. My name is Anthony Pika, and this podcast is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artist grow their business and sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. Today we have a fantastic show. We are interviewing Philip Krisikos, who is an incredible UK broadcaster, voiceover artist, and just all around amazing kind of guy who's been doing this for at least 25 to 30 years at this point and has just been everywhere. The guy is so smart. <laughs> he has uh, so many amazing things to say that this is going to absolutely blow your mind and uh, one of the better podcasts that we've done. And that's saying something because uh, there has been some incredible podcasts out there. So I'm excited to get right into this. All right. So without further ado, let's do it. This is VO's Journey. With your host, the incomparable Anthony Pika. All right, we are back. This is a VO's Journey podcast. My name is Anthony Pika. I'm so excited about the interview we have today. We are joined by an incredible uh, voice actor, uh, radio broadcaster, Philip Chrysikos. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay, good. Chris, Chris, Chrissy Koss, uh, you know, it's fine. Listen, you got there. You got there 95%. It's fine. The it's good. The ironic thing is that we said it right before. <laughs> so anyways, uh, it's great to have you on the show, Philip. Thank you uh, for being here. And um, we also are, I'm joined by my co-host, uh, man of many talents, <laughs> <laughs> Miles Chacoin. Good to have you, sir. You're too kind. <laughs> um, so, uh, Philip, thank you so much for being on the show today. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you for inviting me, both of you. Thank you. Absolutely. So um, just starting out, Philip, I think it would be real beneficial to give us kind of a background. I know um, I, I was at, at your website and just blown away by the incredible amount of work that you have done over your career, also in the broadcast industry. And I think that's what I'm really excited about because I work with so many people who uh, come from the broadcast industry and they, they make that transition to voiceover. They have uh, some of them, a lot of them have a difficult time changing that mindset a little bit. And uh, so I'd love to hear about your journey to start off, maybe a little background about how you got started and kind of where you are now. Well, first of all, I started in, in, um, Hospital radio back in the UK, uh, we've, we've got uh, stations in, in hospitals that have uh, radio, a radio station broadcasting, you know, music shows with presenters, jocks, and it's just for the patients and the hospital staff. And, and I started there a bit like college radio, I think of it like college radio, or university radio, yes. uh, just like that. And uh, I, I started there, always wanted to be, uh, you know, music jock, always. Um, I stumbled into doing a, a, a college course in journalism. So I learned all about reporting and journalism and media law and whatever have you. I went to a very small commercial radio station in the UK as my first job to do journalism and a news broadcaster. But was lucky enough because it was so small um, that I also got to be a presenter and was a music presenter, music jock. So I combined the two. And ever since then, going back 25 years now, um, right the way through my career, I've always managed to, and I'm blessed with this, being able to, to maintain one strand of doing journalism and, and news broadcasting and news anchoring, and the other strand being able to, to jock and, and, and do music shows. And, and, I'm, and I'm lucky as well because both intertwine, you know, you, you, you know how to be really succinct and stuff by doing news and just get to the point but at the same time you know how to do that for, for music jocking and vice versa so the, the two intertwine and it's all about speaking to an audience or to one person just like voiceovers are if I'm trying to sell you something as a voiceover or you're trying to sell it to me you're selling it just to a person so it's, it's there, there's so many crossovers into it and that's been my career all the way through and right. I've been doing out of that 25 years voiceovers about 10 years now and probably you know more more seriously proper full time for probably about uh, eight ten years now 
no, dude, that's awesome. And I know, I know Miles has some really great questions for you too, but I'm going to, I just, I want to, I just want to, I want to actually ask this of you because I find it really interesting, especially with what I do. And we, we've, uh, we're going to kind of dive into the versatility aspect of this, but I wanted to ask you with what you were just saying, how does, or I come across a lot of people uh, now who, you know, they're still, you know, very, um, binary you know they just it's one thing or the other they, they don't do maybe both or they're they're they, they think they've got to just focus in either on voiceover or they're in radio but it sounds like what you're saying is you're you've managed to do all of this and you continue to do it at the same time so my question to you is how do you you know how do you do all of that stuff you know and manage all of that you've got to I always say to people you've got to think of yourself as a brand if you go to the store and you're going to buy a TV, you know, by Samsung or, or whatever, you, you know, you're, you're buying that brand because you like it. People are going to hire you because they like what you've got to offer. Um, and, and, and so I, I really run all three of them separately. If you want me for news and news anchor, this is what you get. And if it's going to be on this sort of a station, that sort of a brand, and, and that's what, what the station is, I will give you that. Likewise for music jocking, likewise, you know, for voiceover as well. I think that the, the one thing I always say to people is when you listen to the radio, if you do the voice at whatever is quite simply what you are doing with our voices is getting a paintbrush, sticking it in the listener's ear, wiggling it about and painting a picture. And if you can do that and you've convinced someone to either buy that product or carry on listening to that e-learning and not getting bored or to carry on listening to that news broadcast or you're jocking, then you succeeded in doing that. That's but it's all. all about seeing yourself as a, as a, as a brand. You know, what, what, what can I offer you? What can you offer me? And, and marketing yourself in, in, in that way. A lot of people I, I come across just are focused on one area and, and they never, if you like, lift their head out, out, out of the trough where they're eating and looking around and thinking, I could this, I could that. And, and, and always listening to other people, other broadcasters, other voiceovers and not being critical, but understanding what they're doing or why they may have done that. And can I do it? Can, yeah. I, can I, can I tweak myself? Can I this? Can I that? I love it, man. I, I, and, and would you say that those, that all three, uh, cause I really believe this too, but would you say for your career that all three of those actually help each other? Yes. And you know, for, for, for example, it, you know, I listen back to my stuff from years ago and, and I thought it was the best thing ever. And, and I listen back to them now and I absolutely cringe, but it's all because it's, it's, it's about learning and, and all three do, do intertwine themselves because, you know, I've seen people who are news anchors and they've got great voices, but they wouldn't know where to start on a voiceover script. I was, I was like that one day, you know, there, there, there are news people who can't be music jocks. There are music jocks who can't be, um, news jocks and so, so so it's all about being able to to take individual bits and entwine it into one and the more versatile you are and and you know i grew up listening to you know to, to other presenters other jocks other voiceovers and and even now you know on youtube there's stuff now nearly nearly the festive season holiday time here's holiday adverts from 1986 that are on tv and you listen to them going wow god look how much things have changed since Look how they did that. Oh, look at the style of this, even e-learning stuff. Yeah. I was watching a documentary on, on Ford and, and the cars they had in Europe and stuff. I'm going, oh, look how voiceovers have changed since for e-learning. Or, yeah. oh, I understand that. Oh, yeah, that's still like that today. I get that. It's interesting, Philip, because you've said um, that, uh, that obviously you cringe when you look back at or, or listen back at, shall I say, at some of the stuff that you did yeah. maybe 20 years ago. and. I find that fascinating. I would actually love to hear what you sounded like because I think you're one of these few people that I would class as kind of got a, a natural God-given talent. Um, your your voice just has that kind of soothing um, appeal about it that makes it very very adaptable to a lot of different types of work. And and I and I know that that doesn't just come naturally. I know that comes through experience and through practice. It absolutely does. But but not everybody else has that starting point. And I can give you, I mean, we, we get calls every day, okay, at, at Voquent from new voice actors, people who want to be voice actors or people who haven't even been in the game. And they call up and they say, I've been told I have a great voice. And I go, uh-huh. And then they say, and therefore, what do you think? 
<laughs> and, and, and of course, I'm, I'm stuck kind of saying, well, I, I think you sound like a, a fine person. And they're like, no, no, do you, is, has, have I got it? Does my voice have it? And, and immediately, I'm, I'm put on the spot having to try to explain that, that, you know, everybody has a voice and everybody can make their voice work for them if, it's, if, if they're interested in doing so. Are you serious? People call you and just literally ask that? Every day. Every day, without fail, we get we get at least one call a day every day from a new person who says, "I've been told I have a great voice. I want to be in the I want to be in the industry." And uh, where's the TV jobs? Let's go. Let's do this. Well, if you're let's do this. I'm ready. I'm ready. Listening to this podcast, don't call Miles and <laughs> <laughs> please. Well, but please, you know, listen to some of Anthony Pika's stuff, or or go check out Philip's website, or or or, or go on to Boquin and and listen to all the people there first, and then. And then think about how you're going to approach the market and what kind of voice work you want to do. I would, I would definitely say that. But I don't want to get away from the point. I think what I was trying to say was is that I think some people have a, an easier starting point than others. And maybe, uh, Philip, you might not extend that to every type of work. You might decide that you never want to work in games um, or, or, or character animations, although I have every confidence that if you started doing that, you'd be really good at it. I think it's, it's, it's a starting point that says, I do have a good voice. And and I think that that's not all about confidence and practice. Some of that's just, I think, being at ease with yourself. Yeah, I, I, I'd have no idea where to start with, with gaming or characters or anything like that. I, you know, I, I know people in this industry as, as, as you guys do, and I, I, I'm just in awe of them that they can do characters or, or gaming and, and play so many different characters. I, I was watching some, some preschool program that was on the TV the other, the other day. And, um, and I started doing, doing the voice of the King. Hello. How do I, I just, just, just to myself, you know, listening to things. Oh, I could do that. And I thought, yeah, okay, you could do it. But the, here's the thing. And this, this I think applies as well with people who ring you up saying, you know, someone's told me I've got a good voice. Fine. They may well have. However, I think, the game changes when you put somebody in front of a microphone with headphones on and go, there's a the script, go. Because when you hear your voice back or you're in that pro session, things just change completely. You're no longer just doing it for the sake of doing it. This is now real. And people hate hearing the sound of their own voices. And it's about getting over that. Mm -hmm. And as, as you say, being confident with it and just letting yourself go and just being natural. But I, I, I know for myself, I wouldn't know where to start with games or characters or anything else like that. Be well out of my contract uh, con uh, comfort zone. Right. See, I, I've got I've got a trick that I that I do since I'm not a voice actor, which is I just don't listen to anything that I that was recorded, um, so that I don't have to feel bad. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> well, here's a, here's a tip that I always say to people, and I do this for myself as well. If ever you've done something and you want and, and you want to it's gone out you know a commercial or on the radio or something you know jocking or something and you want to listen back to it never listen back to it they say it's just been done now and it's done for at least two or three days because to me i used to do it and i let's say if i was listening back to myself jockeying on the radio and as i did listen to it not only was i listening to what i said and how i said it, I remembered what I was thinking at that time. Oh yeah, I was doing this and I was thinking what I was going to have for dinner tonight and I was doing this and I pressed that button, blah, blah, blah. But when you listen to it after a few days, maybe even a week, your head is so clear, you can't remember that. All you know is what you are listening to and it's you and you forget what you were thinking and what you were doing at the time of saying those things. And that way you see it more objectively and just pl press play and listen. Don't analyze, just listen, because no one is gonna be sitting there analyzing it as much as you will. It's true. That's a great piece of advice. Um, that's, that's, that's actually, I think it's really, really good advice, Philip. You know, the, to give it a few days before you listen back, it gives you that, that pause, gives you the time to reflect. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, I've done some stuff for clients that I've, you know, I then go and try and find on the internet and stuff so I can, you know, hear it if they haven't sent it to me. And there are some I listen back to and go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I get that. We all know majority of the time we don't get the videos or the treatments or the storyboards to see. We've got very little direction, but they're the words. And we need to bring those words to life. Coming back to paintbrush in the ear, wiggle it about, paint a picture. At the same time, there's other ones I listen to and think, oh, yeah, no, do you know what? I should have said that differently should have gone harder on that word or, you know, so, and, and that's the only way of doing it when you're completely clear headed and, and can't think what else you were doing at that time. No. So, so, 
Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Oh, I was I was gonna I was actually gonna ask you, uh, Philip. Um, just uh, moving along with um, one of the big questions I wanted to ask you was for people in the broadcast industry uh, who are looking to make the transition to do voiceover. Um, you know, what would you, you know, what kind of advice would you give them? So I guess, I guess, let me, let me, uh, put a little more context to it. So basically, uh, I, you know, the, when I talk to, uh, a lot of people from the broadcast industry, they say they struggle with the uh, coming from that type of, um, expected voice, you know, as a broadcaster to then being, as we were talking about the more versatile as a voiceover artist yeah i i I think it's it's easy when you're on on the radio for example whether you're you're news anchoring or 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 music jockeying and stuff to think yeah i've got a voice this sounds really good everyone loves me i've got my ratings whatever have you and it's and and it and it's different to be a voiceover just like it is if you're a voiceover to go in one of those other two disciplines what it is, is, is to understand that what you are delivering on the radio, jocking or news, you need to leave that behind. You just need to be yourself. You need to, you, you need to just be natural. And, you know, sometimes if you're going to go and attack a script, sometimes just take a step back in your mind, maybe even take a little step back in the mic and, and, and know that your voice is a toolbox. If you, you know, if you're a plumber or whatever, or a, or a carpenter, if you went to a job, you'd take your screwdriver, your spanner, your monkey wrench, whatever, and that is your voice. And you've got to know that if you, I know, for example, if, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I need to do any deep voice, deep voice, a little bit of gravel to it or anything, I did, I did one for MIV exhausts in Europe. And when I did that audition, and when I came to do the proper one, I realized that I need to do this. First thing in the morning, not just woken up, but I've, I've woken up, I've got my, my coffee, haven't done much chatting, but I've done enough just to loosen it and just do it. And it'll sound completely different to, to now that I've been up for, you know, 12 odd, odd hours. Likewise, that's important because if I do a voiceover, and this should apply to, to, to anyone, is know your times of day for your voice. If you're going to go and do a job, you know, let's say, 10 a.m. in the morning, and you've been, it doesn't matter how long you've been up for, but 10 a.m. in the morning, know that if you're going to come and do a pickup for that client, don't, don't be upset, dismayed, panicked if when you come to do a pickup at 8 p.m. in the evening, you can't match that little drop in of the voice here and there to change a few words. Do it around about the same time in the day that you did the original take because your voice won't match. You would have used your voice more. Um, know know about getting close to the mic for something like this or a little bit further away and know that and that's and that's what I do and it and it makes the job a whole lot easier because I've tried to do pickups of voiceovers late in the evening and my my voice just will not match the style and pace if I'm doing a pickup absolutely it's just not there or when I did the audition Oh, so yeah. it's all that tool, just, just know your voice as a tool and, and if you know how it works, you know it's highs and lows, it's limitations make it work for you that's, that's again fantastic advice philip really really good I mean, there's so many people that i think will benefit when hearing from this um there's a lot of people in the world right now who aspire to be a voice actor in just to hear little things like what you're talking about here these little subtleties can make such a huge difference and and everybody's looking to to make a difference I mean, there's one thing in particular, though, that I think I've, I've seen time and time again, which is people working in isolation, they need to find a way to motivate themselves. And, and they really look to each other in their communities to help motivate them because it, it's hard, you know, especially, especially if you're, you're grinding out auditions and you're not getting any returns. You're not getting anybody who's coming back and saying, we've selected you. Um, and so there's all that work that you're putting in and you're not necessarily seeing the return yet. And, and by the time you do see one, you look at the conversion ratio, you know, one in 70 or something and think, oh my God, this, this, is, this is awful. Um, and, uh, and as much as, you know, Voquin as a website doesn't try to promote the auditioning approach, we try to change that completely by obviously having prepared samples to, so people can hear the best of you without having to force you to do all that grinding. There is always going to be a place for auditions, I think. And, and when it comes to additions, 
how do you, how would you suggest that people could best motivate themselves? Because some people, uh, they wake up every day and they feel like I love my life and I love my job. It, but there's other people out there who they're getting more and more ground down and they do have what it takes, but it's like, what do they look to when the numbers aren't, aren't revealing a, a positive path at that time? I, I've been in every one of those scenarios you've just mentioned, Miles, the one where, <laughs> where, 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 you, where you do the auditions and um, you look back on whether they've been opened, read, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. Yeah. And they haven't. And, and you know, I've been there and thought, you know what, I've just spent probably the best part of eight hours during the course of this last week on all these auditions and maybe two have been opened or they haven't been at all. And, and, and you, do, you do get down and think to yourself, oh, why do I bother? Why do I bother? And I've just got the subscription. Why do I bother? And, and, and the, only, the only way of, I think, getting around, and I've been to that situation where as well, where I've done an audition, thought that is the best one ever. My, that's, I, I, I couldn't have done better myself. Love it to bits. They're going to hire me. And you don't. It's, it's, You've got to remember, A, it's all subjective. You know, what, what, what Anthony may like, you may not, and vice versa. Um, hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we've all heard things on, on TV or radio or ever, or, you know, in, in a store and gone, why do they use that voiceover? It's awful. But someone else likes it and it fits, fitted the brand for, for other reasons. So it's all about being, being subjective and, 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 and just knowing that because you don't like it, somebody else will like your voice. Right. Also, just knowing that, look, I've got a subscription here. All right, I need to use it. Whatever. But ultimately, these subscription sites, no matter how much people um, um, put them down, fine. I, I, I agree. You need to look at the cost and think, listen, am I going to audit? That's the one the other day. The, 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 the cost versus the words ratio and whatever else was massively different. And I thought, I'm not going to audition for that. But ultimately, I see the audition sites Think of it as a 360 degree circle. I see it as, it is, as if, you, if you get a job on those sites, that's half a circle done. That client comes back to you or you can convert that client to have that relationship with you off that site and they come to you again. That's a whole 360 degree circle. You've just won yourself a new client and you can set yourself your own rates. And it's by saying, listen, on that, it's, you know, it's a special introductory offer, however you want to market it, whatever. I had one, I did some in-flight entertainment um, uh, announcements on one of these sites. And they came back to me about a month later and said, the client wants some additional ones now. Do you want to do it via the site or can we deal with you direct? We deal direct new clients and that's the way to see you need to you need to see that as a springboard not as the be all and end all and that is where your your career starts and finishes and ends yeah i i yeah i mean that's i think that's i love the 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 patient because <laughs> i think that's such an important word uh especially nowadays because it's building up you know that old rolodex kind of idea right and, yeah, you're, you're gonna... and, and it's another way of, of, of harvesting new clients. And on some of these, it even tells you, you know, who, who the client is. And, you know, you can even harvest that to go direct to them. But always know that if you go direct to clients, whether it's off these sites or you're doing cold calling or emailing, whatever, always make sure you're, you know, number one, you know who you are emailing. Like, Anthony, if I'm going to email you, I'm going to email you and I'm going to say, hey, Anthony, not dear sir, madam, or hey and I've got your email address and make sure it's, it's, it's personal. So the name and, and, and don't just whittle on, on an email. Think about it. If you get an email from somewhere, you're going to read the top line and the bottom line done. If you see more than a couple of, a couple of lines in a paragraph, you don't care. You need to sell yourself and maybe even offer instead of sending them audio. So this is me. This is what I've done. Can I send you some of my demos? Because that way, they're going to say, yes, yeah, send them because they think, number one, you're not going to send them or B, they're interested. And if you do send them and they don't get back to you, follow it up because they've just, they've, they've opened that channel of communication with you and, yeah. and, 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 and agreed for you to send them to them. And I, I, I love that. I love that advice. And I want to, I want to follow that up with you though, because I think what happens is there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of new people listen to this podcast too. And I know when I first started, you know, and I would listen to like this podcast or something and someone, you know, like yourself would say, you know, tell some, you know, send somebody, uh, you know, almost like a mini of your bio, uh, j just a little bit enough to tell them what you, you know, who you are. Um, 
I'd be like, I don't, I mean, what am I going to tell them? I haven't done anything. But then I think I realized that that's just not true. Just because you might not have a bio that's full of voiceover work yet, you should have, you know, you have a bio of your life or what your education is or where, you know, what you've done. And that's valuable too. I found that's extremely valuable um, to bring to the, to the table. Absolutely. And, and also watch what you put on, on social media. You know, it's, you know, social media to me is I, I, I use it to subtly self promote what I am doing and tagging in those clients and whatever, um, as a, as a, as opposed to commenting ad hoc on anything and everything, because in that way, so, you know, it's, you mentioned Anthony, you went to my website and stuff. So you may look to me on Twitch or something. You, you, you want people who are going to find you to know what you do and how you do it and how super duper you are as opposed to rifling through, oh, I don't know, what you thought the new holiday song should be or what you thought on some front page thing in the Daily Herald. Yeah. And then eventually they'll, they'll come across your work. And likewise, what, what I did to my website, I tried to get as many, not too much, or you don't want to overpower people with, with things, but just enough of a tickle sample of, this is what I do here, this is what I do there, and this is what I do elsewhere, to, to make people want to find more. And I started you know, doing blogs as well, just so Google doesn't see my website as being dead, just so it can just help, help things still alive. Uh, just little things. You got ultimately, I think what I'm trying to say is look at yourself as a brand, as I said earlier, and you are a company, you are a business, and you've got to keep plowing away at it all the time to be fresh. I, Philip, I'm totally, and I want to bring Miles in on this because I, I, I want to hear from his perspective uh, and from like, you know, uh, for when a, in a casting way, you know, cause I'm always telling, I'm always telling people, you know, you, you need to get yourself, you need to create content. Let's be real. Whether, you know, it's, it's content on social media, blogs, you need to be doing something in order for people, just like you said, Philip, I think to be able to search for you. So Miles, I wanted to ask you, if someone contacts you and do you find that voice actors who have a better brand, you know, either it's, you know, you know, via the work they've done or, or, mm. or so like the content or things they're creating, do you find that it's easier to sell them? Like, does it help if they are, you know, more known or, you know, like you can go and, and find, you know, they're, they're everything's up to date. You know what I mean? Like they're active on social. Yeah. Like I wanted to get your take on that. I think, I think that often depends on, the, the actual type of job, because something that, that I think has become more and more clear over time is that people are prepared to pay potentially large sums of money. And I say potentially large because not, not, you know, the budgets will vary. But people are potentially prepared to pay large sums of money for a celebrity to endorse their brand, right? So when they pay for a mega job, a mega recording for a TV commercial or even a radio commercial with a celebrity, they're going to prepare, be prepared to pay over the odds. And that's because they're going to leverage the brand of that celebrity. Right. Now, just because you're not a celebrity doesn't mean you don't have a brand. You do. And, and this is why it's such great sound advice, Phil, that you've been giving here. Because you're absolutely right. Don't, don't mix your, you know, your Twitter channel or your, sorry, your Facebook with your, your, your personal opinions, your family photos, and your, um, you know, your, your holiday photos with your, with your business brand on Facebook. It, they're two different things. Um, and people make this mistake a lot. They, 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 they start using their socials from a personal perspective, trying to kind of engage in the, cause they weren't really sure what the technology is for. And then they only kind of later understand that actually this is part of their brand and they're not using it effectively because these are tools for your brand. And, and I think that when someone has all these tools, they have a good website, they have, um, a, you know, a good, a good background, a good, uh, you know, lots and lots of material to prove that they can work in the market. I think those do those things are meaningful for as long as it's for the work that's being prepared. So, I mean, honestly, if someone calls up and says, we need a car commercial and every so often we get that one, Philip, you, you, you may not know this, but we, we put you through um, when we get asked for that almost every time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do I send the check? Because <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is, is that, you just have such a great level of experience um, with the automotive industry um, as, as, as well as many others. 
um, that that you are a perfect fit option for people who are looking to to fill a, to fill a, a voice for that. But I think that it goes beyond just what you've done because it's not fair to say, well, it's all chicken and egg. Once you've got all the recordings and proven you can done it, do it, then then you'll get more work offers, and it's all about the snowball effect. I think that you can still diversify and and start to talk about what you can do and how you can do it. Um, and record uh, work that hasn't necessarily been used, but she'll still demonstrates that you're capable of doing that. And I think all those things will help because um, it, it's particularly in a casting situation, people are looking for more than just how does your voice sound? Because there is a, you're right in that when you said earlier that every uh, voice that gets selected is, is completely sub, uh, subjective. It is. It, because we've been in the same situation. We put through five or 10 voices out of, say, 100 for a big job and said, one of these five is going to nail it. They are so good. They, they are so good. And then it will be one of the ones that we kind of thought, well, you can listen to them, but these are the ones we'd, rec- these are the ones we'd recommend. Um, and they'll pick somebody else. And we're like, what? Really? Really? That, mm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I, I'm, and, and that's out of consensus. And so – is there any actual objectivity to what makes a a voice ideal or a good fit for any job? Uh, You know, for the most part, no, it's all going to come down to who's running the production and making decisions. But I think that you can certainly even up the odds and increase your chances by trying to do as many different things as you can. And, and, and certainly one of those things, one of those big things is, is, is not just being able to demonstrate that you've got, you know, a good brand and that you've got, uh, you know, versatility in your voice and you're prepared to, to offer different reads and, and, and think about the subtleties. I think another big part of it just comes down to being really friendly. Um, if, if, if you're friendly to work with, people will want to, to reach out to you and say, hey, I've got a job here. It may work. It may not. But, you know, friendly people like to work together. People who are difficult um, and who are standoffish and rigid, um, people who make themselves prohibitive or or set the bar really high. You know, if you want to talk to me, you better be prepared to pay. That's a that's get ready to just destroy your brand if you do that. It's it's not a good way to to, to build relationships. And that's I think that relationships still play a big part of decision making when it comes to casting. And that takes me to that to my other point, that which is which is on par with that, Miles, is that you know we we've so spoken about trying to nail jobs and where to get them or whatever have you, but that's the other point that you've just made there. Once you've got the job, you need to treat that client, that producer, that whatever, as you would expect to be treated if you went into your local store to buy something. Okay, you know, they, if 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 somebody e- emails me for, for for you know for for a job or a quote or a sample or right, here we are, here's a job. I will get back to them within a couple of hours, maximum two hours, and, and manage their expectations. You know, no problem at all, I'll get this back to you by then. Um, when do you need it by? When this, because if every, everyone's got time pressures, everyone is busy in life, personally or professionally, but if you treat your client or whoever's come to you with a job in the same way that you would treat that person if they walked into your store to be served by you, they would keep coming back. And a lot of people, you know, as, as, as you say, Mars, you know, they, they'll take an approach because it's on email and they can be like that. But as soon as you get them on the phone, they're different. Face to face, different again. You need to treat them like a customer walking into your store face to face. Hello, Miles. How can I help you today? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of shift here a little bit because I, I want to ask you this question. Like I always ask everybody that comes on the show. Um, and, and I'm interested too, because I know that you're in the UK, so this would be a little maybe, but still a good conversation. Um, there, there's of course this thing right now in our world about rates and how much to charge and, you know, different places and and charging less or more. So what I wanted to ask you is, you know, what do you see? uh, Or maybe let me let me rephrase this. What's your when we talk about your theory of everything? (laughs) What's what's Philip's theory of everything when it comes to rates? Rate, rates, a lot of people, some people maybe um, like to publish them on their with their website. And um, we all know every job is different. You know, I've, I've had people who email me to say, um, yeah, can you, can you do this? Um, it's just for an online 
uh, tutorial done. And, and they expect you to quote. Well, every job is different. You, I think, first of all, you need, you need to, 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 to positively know and believe and understand how you got to that belief in your own heart as to how much you're going to charge for you know, a telephone on hold, how much you're going to charge for an e-learning, um, uh, for a TV commercial, this is a, all the way through. You need to know that from the start. Because if you don't and don't understand that, I'm not saying you know, you're, you're not going to move away from it or, or consider it. But unless you, un you don't understand that from the start, as soon as you get that email come into your inbox, you're going to go, Gling! oh my God, it's a job. Yeah, um, 20 bucks, sure. No problem, bye. And, and, and it's probably a 400 buck job. You know, you, you, you need, it comes back to running like a business to yourself. That yeah. you, need, you need to not undervalue yourself not be grateful that you've got the job uh, because the last thing you want to do is to get a job which is cheap you know it's cheap and you sit down to do it and your heart's not in it because you know you're being you've undercut your own self or someone else is making money off you elsewhere but you need to have those rates in your own head to, to know what you can quote and then when you get that job through invariably 95 percent of the time there's not going to be enough information there. So to have the confidence, say, hi, Anthony, hi, Miles, you know, thanks for getting in contact. Thanks for, thank, you know, thank, thanks for, you know, liking my voice, whatever. You know, can you give me some more details on this? You know, where's it going to be used? Do you want buyout? How many words is it? Um, is it going to be, um, is it going to attract advertising pre-roll on the internet? Whatever it may be, all, you know, all jobs are different, whether it's online or TV commercial or just straight non-broadcast or whatever. And don't be afraid to ask and then to yeah. pick, pitch yourself at the appropriate level. Not like, oh, I don't know. Here's Anthony. I'll charge him 10 bucks. Here's some pharmaceutical company. I'll charge him 100 because I can get away with it. You know, there, there were some people a few years back who, 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 who sent the audio as WAB or MP3. But if the client came back and said, oh, do you mind if it was MP3? Do you mind doing it as WAV? And they charge them something like about 50 bucks to do it. Well, if to me, if that client ever knew that all you had to do in your, in your Adobe Audition or Audacity, whatever you use, go click, 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 save. <laughs> yeah. they were th you just ripped me off for 100 bucks for that. Yeah. No, there are things you do as an added extra as a freebie because it builds relationships. There was one I did on e-learning the other day. It was literally six words, six different words in this e-learning. I did it for free. What for? It's going gonna, it's gonna to take me more time to open up that file, do an invoice, send it over to them, blah, 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 and them to pay. Just do it for free. I don't even say you're doing it for free. Just do it because they know. And it builds relationship and it builds trust. Likewise, if you're doing a sentence and it doesn't make sense, read that sentence and then do an alternative take on how you think that sentence should read. Done. I've, I, you know, I've had some, some stuff from Europe and the English hasn't you know, been, been properly translated or something. Just do it. Right. Do you know what's going to save you time in the future? And it builds trust and relationships and confidence in, in one another. What right. you're talking about there, Philip, is actually, the, I think, the, the essence of good business. Because as... Uh, you know, at, at Voquent, we we work with projects of all types, um, and and one of the more challenging projects with types that we get is when we get uh, a big multilingual job. You know, twenty or thirty languages um, or more. And when we end up working on those, one of the big questions that comes into it, of course, is price. And and of course, we're not now looking at just one rate. We're looking at um, a per voice rate across the board, plus a bunch of additional services, potentially like translation as well. And the thing is, is that when we're pricing ourselves up for a job with a new client, um, it, it's we're, we're acutely aware of the fact that we're not the only company that they've probably contacted to get a price. And so I think it's important in business to always know that you're, you're not in isolation. You haven't been picked because you're the only person. And if you start treating your customers like that or new customers like that, you're taking a big, big risk um, by trying to set the bar too high too early. But there's no doubt about it that if, as long as you, you put in a rate that makes you comfortable, that means that you're not going to be putting yourself in a position that is bad business for you in the first place, then when you do get it, you've got 
the basis from which to build a really great relationship because you've set the price at a reasonable amount, but you haven't set it so high that nobody's ever going to want to come back to you again because they realize quite quickly that they can get just as good elsewhere. And, and that's where I think a lot of voice actors in particular can make mistakes was, is when they think that they are um, in a situation where they only have this one to gain. And so they, they treat a relationship as a short term thing and, and throw away the opportunity by pricing themselves out too high. And obviously they can also lose the opportunity by devaluing themselves and pricing themselves so low that their self-worth looks so poor that yes, they might get picked up, but if they're not going to get picked up for a while again, um, somebody might be going, yeah, we want to get somebody who's really good for this one. And, and, and the fact that somebody devalues themselves so low they'll it's almost like they're telling the client that that they're not worth that much that they're not actually that good they're almost sowing the seeds of doubt and so i think knowing the price to go in at is it is critically important but it's also extremely important to make sure that you're competitive enough that they're going to want to come back to you that's that's the key thing because you do a great job for someone and 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 you have a great relationship with them that just unlocks all these new opportunities and all the and more and more business. And that's, that's what it's all about. And also never be afraid to, I've had some jobs through um, from, from clients in Europe and stuff. And, and, and the rate hasn't really been there for me. And, and I've had to either say to them outright, you know, I, I, I can't do this. Job. Listen, thank you so much for selecting me. Really grateful, but I can't do this, this job at this rate. And then, and then saying to them, you know, this is the rate I could do it at. Um, yeah. And at least that way, they, they, they can make that informed choice how much they need to go from and to to bridge that gap or not at all. Comes back to what I said, you know, a few moments ago about you don't want to sit there, be doing the job. Grateful that you got the job, but then detesting that you're sitting there doing it because you've undervalued yourself. And, and likewise, you know, g going forward, um, you may get so much work out of that client, but because you've lowballed yourself, you're going to be lowballing forever. And you can't suddenly be going back in six jobs time and saying, yeah, actually, I, I got it wrong. Likewise, you don't want to, to, to get so excited you got the job and to give that, or that, 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 that pitch and, and, and price, hit send on the email. And in 20 minutes time, when you're making yourself tea or coffee or something, stirring that cup, thinking, yeah, it's a bit high, wasn't it? I'm not going to hear back. Maybe I should have done it 50 bucks less, 100 bucks less or something. Y you want to be confident that what you've done You've quoted correctly to yourself. You can justify it to yourself. If you get the job, amazing. If you don't, I couldn't have done it for any less. Well, I, I, I listen, I, and I have to say something, and I, and I think this is a true. I, I really believe right now there's two different worlds out there uh, colliding. Uh, and I know, Miles, we've spoken about this, but you know, we're, the, the idea with the access of the internet and the world and with websites that are making it easier even for everybody to connect you're starting to have a lot of jobs that are available for you know people like like entre you know solopreneurs people by them who who have small teeny budgets or you know college students i mean you know or, or whoever wants a voiceover you have that work also flying around and as we talk about rates i just wanted to say too you know i think because that is also now prevalent and it is that there are a lot of jobs out there that are for a lot less and that, you know, there are going to be people who are willing to do that. You know what I mean? And, and I, like I said, I personally, I don't have a problem with that, but I do, ex Philip, I think, and, and Miles, exactly what you guys are saying is so important. Your knowledge of why you are doing what you're doing is, is, is so important. I can't tell you how many times I have somebody who gets a job and then they say, Hey, how much should I charge them? <laughs> it's like, well, you, you should have thought of that really before you started. Um, well, to, but, to me, to me, it says, how much can I fleece them for? How much can I take them for? As opposed to this is the, the, the rate. Just like if you walk into a shop, you want to know how much that, that is going to cost and you'll have an idea how much you're willing to spend as opposed to you walk in and they see the way you're dressed and they change the price ticket. That come in dress some, you know, uh, in a suit or in joggers, they, they give you a different price. And that's a classic conversation that a lot of customers are always afraid and pensive of having with anybody, whether it's a voice actor or an agency or, or a marketplace or anyone that they go to to get a price, or even a production company that's going to try to go and source voices themselves, is they'll say, 
I need a couple of, you know, recordings done for this job. How much is it going to cost? Right. They, they haven't picked anybody. They don't know what they want. They just kind of go, what's it going to cost? And then, and then of course the, the, a, a good person in sales will say, well, what's your budget? And, <laughs> and then you get this kind of difficult, awkward situation where there's somebody who wants to know what something's going to cost and may not know or may have an idea, but they don't want to volunteer that information because they say, okay, I've, I've got, I've got 800 bucks. And it's like, oh, well, the job's going to cost 799 then, isn't it? That's, that's, and that's what the customer is afraid of is that if they give them a budget, they're just going to swallow all that up. But I think mm. that you have to have a sensible conversation about budget. And so when, when, when we, when we contact a voice actor about a job, we'll say, this is the budget. There's no, there's no sort of like, what would you charge for this? And we'll see if we could make maximum margin. No, 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 no. It's look, here's the job. This is what it costs. That's it. Um, and if you can't do it, no problem. Come back and tell us what you can do it for. And if the client will accept it, fantastic. And if they won't, well, that's okay. That's what happens. But it's a sensible, pragmatic discussion around budget. And, and, and the worst thing is, is that when people don't ask the questions and they're too afraid to ask the questions, that they end up having to guess and either guess high and lose the job because they didn't realize that was way over the budget, it was never going to accept it, or guess low because they don't know what they're competing against. And that's really, really important to understand the difference. Absolutely. Well, hey, Philip, we got, I've got uh, just two more questions and then we're going to wrap this up. And I thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, the, the, this next question, I mean, I think we've been kind of talking about it, but we're going to kind of put it into more of a, a, a specific way. So what would you say the top three most common mistakes that less, to, less experienced voice actors make when approached with an opportunity? I, mean, I think first, it, but... first and foremost, perhaps um, getting excited that they've got that email or that phone call, that they've, they've got a potential job and um, mispricing themselves, either underpricing, overpricing, or thinking, well, you know, it's this brand, I'll do it for less, or it's that brand, I can take them for more. You, you, you need to just always take a step back, even if it's on the phone and, and, and ask those questions and then say, right, okay, well, listen, I'll get you a price and, and, and I'll get back to you. So I, I think first and foremost, it's, it's, it's the pricing option and getting carried away with, with um, what they're pricing at. And in, um, in, in real quick, Philip, what would you recommend people on the pricing thing there? How would you recommend that they go about pricing themselves? In the in the UK and you know you can see it internationally. There's a website called Gravy for the Brain, uh -huh. and and there's um, a rate card there where you can where you can go in and let's say for e-learning, it'll it'll say to you, well, here's the lowest, here's the average mid, here's the high price to do, whether you should charge um, a studio fee on that, whether you should charge usage on a particular job or whatever have you, and it's all been put together by pros in the industry and with production companies in the industry gathering together what the going market rates are and the variables. So that is a good starter. That's the equivalent of like the GVAA um, yeah, rate card, really, yeah. in Global the United market. States. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah, exactly. And 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 it's a, it's a good starter, and it's also a good understanding, just so you know where you are going on it and you can just you can even just play around with it as, as you can the GVAA and, and, and just see well if I did this or if I did that job even if you haven't got the job maybe if I did this job or that job what would it and it gives you an understanding so that's that's really the, the first one secondly as well you can never scrimp on quality if, 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 if people are paying you top dollar or bottom dollar they expect quality because that's the price they're willing to pay or that's the price you've asked them for so don't scrimp on on your microphone on your studio setup on on, on your sound quality echoing and 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 and, uh, and being able to rely on doing it post-production is rubbish if, if you start with rubbish quality in the first place no matter how much you clean it up it's still going to be like that so yeah. be prepared to invest in your equipment. Yes, you've got to start somewhere. Yes, you need to make the money back. But if you are just starting out as well, think, do you know what? I'm going to put so many thousand dollars down, $4,000 down, five thousand, and I'm going to invest in, in the microphone, in the computer setup, in, 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 in the, the, the recording environment and, and whatever have you. And then once you've done that, it's like tomorrow, it's in today, tomorrow, 
it's going to start paying me back. And you work and you work and you work until you pay it back. See it as an investment, see it as a business, see it as a company. It needs to make money to come back. And then when you've got that, the third one is never rest on your laurels. You are always learning all the time, whether you're sitting in the cinema, whether you're at home on watching the TV or listening to the radio, whatever. Listen to the voices. Why are they saying it like this? Whether it's a news anchor or a presenter or a particular commercial, why? You may like it, you may not. You may learn from it, but always have your ears open to everything. That's awesome, Philip. Thank you, man. I, I've got to ask a, um, one additional question, Philip, in relation to the point you made about home studio gear and upgrading your, your equipment. I feel that we've seen at Boquin Obviously, we, we, we've worked with so many thousands of voice actors that it, it's, it, everyone's got a different approach. But I've seen a recurring theme in a small cross-session of voice actors around the world that do one thing, which I would class as a mistake personally. Not every, everybody's got their own approach. I can't stop them. And that is itemizing their home studio as a fee. I think, personally, that's a mistake. And I'll tell you why I think that's a mistake. Because if, and, and, I, and, and everyone's got a different job, but you can imagine that you, you go to a dentist and the dentist said, here's a separate fee because I'm using a better set of tools on your mouth than the other dentist down the road. Or can you imagine going to an electrical contractor and saying, um, what's the price to get my house rewired? And then they come back in and they say, yeah, and here's a, a better tools fee. Um, and you're like, what? And yes, that's my fee for better tools. My feeling is, is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with trying to recover the cost of your recording equipment if you're producing great quality material, because that's a great investment. But put that into your rate that says, this is what I cost and this is what I'm worth. Don't itemize that as though somehow everybody who works with you should be fitting the bill for the investment that you made in allowing you to create a better quality product. I think it's a terrible mistake. But... But if, but if Anthony, you, you or, or Philip, if yourself, if you guys disagree, I would love to hear, you know, the, even if it's devil's advocate, what the benefit is of, of doing it. I think in the UK, it's, it's very historical on, on a yeah, BSF, a, a, a studio fee like that. And, and, and some jobs do command it, other jobs don't. And in the markets we have been in for many years now, because of the internet, you've got to be able to try and explain in the UK uh, a basic studio fee to an audience who may be in, I don't know, Spain, Paraguay, right. in Lithuania, because they may not have that there or they don't have that there. So it's a way of having to explain it. And, 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 and really, if, it's, if it takes time to explain something, as you say, Miles, build it into your price. I agree. I think actually, you know, it's it's interesting question because I think this is actually I think this is a, an amazing question because uh, for me, and and it could be and just could be the the people I know, but you know, in the U.S., there is this sort of I don't know. I I've kind of coined it as the Amazon effect, uh, and basically meaning like there's this new, you know, if you want to say like the wild wild west or something and voiceover where you know people are from all over the world are looking for like an amazon style of purchase where they go to a site find what they want click on it they don't want to talk to you they don't want to do much they just want to order something get it back and go on their way and you know that is definitely something that is starting to happen a lot more because like I said earlier with everything growing and I do find at least Philip and, and the more the UK uh, voice actors and stuff that I meet and talk to that there is definitely and, and this is the world right there's definitely places where it's completely different mindsets uh, of certain things but I can tell you too that I do think from you know that standpoint for us that it it pricing it into what you do is important. Like, for example, I built out my studio and I've spent a lot of money on it now, but I would, I would, I would never say, I would never say, cause I think that's like, to me, that just sounds like I'm being stuck. Like I would never say, and there's a studio fee uh, because I, you know, like that should be my all encompassing price. But 
that also would go to then fill up what you're saying about different places in the world, which then leads back to knowing who you're working with, knowing your business, right? And knowing how that, how, how, how to approach those aspects. I think that's... Yeah, I you know, you're, you're, you're right. Sorry to cut over you there, but you're, you're right. If, you know, to me, you know, you've come to me for a job. This is the job. This is what the budget is or how much will it be? If I then go back to you with a price, you see the price and then you see this additional BSF for the UK and I have to then explain it to you. You're just going to be bamboozled. You're going to look up, build it into your feet. If, if you're dealing with a territory that doesn't deal with it, yes. build it into your free. And that's so important because I have a I have someone who uh, <laughs> and they, they they will always come to me and say I don't need to pay licensing in my country, uh, so I don't have to pay that. <laughs> and you know I think that it's so important just what you said, Philip. You know, build it into your fee. <laughs> you so the, and there is some fees that I think are worth separating out, and 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 they don't always have to be separated out. Some people have an approach they like to keep it simple and include everything together, and that's fine. And um, that's but but I think that when it comes to um, live direction, there's going to be more time put into live direction than there is just simply doing a quick recording at a time that suits you when you can batch record five, six jobs all in a row. So if, if live direction is a requirement, there's, there's no issue with separating that out so that people can see oh, if I wasn't being live directed, I could do it for a cheaper fee because I'd be, it would be in my time. If I'm being live directed. I'm going to have to put more time aside, potentially the entire hour when it would have taken me just 10 minutes to record. Um, even if I had to do a retake later on. I think also identifying whether you include retakes is not a bad thing. And finally, audio editing. Some people consider it, they wouldn't ever let their recording leave their booth um, without editing it themselves because they hate the idea of somebody, you know, audio editing their voice. There's other people that simply can't, and so they couldn't add it anyways. And then there's some people who can, and they charge it as a separate thing. And I think it's all okay. All of those are okay. Uh, but I think it's also good to know that, that generally, com competitively, people don't have an audio editing fee where I'll do my own editing. And if they are, then make sure if you're dealing with it, particularly if you're dealing with a production company that does their own audio editing, if you think you're going to charge them for the job that they are going to have to do anyways, you're making a mistake. Take it out. Take it out. You're making yourself more expensive and you're also making yourself more prohibitive to work with. So know your customer. If you, if you know they're going to do audio editing, don't say, well, I do all my audio editing. No, you're not going to be better than them. They're going to have people who do editing all day, every day. Don't put it in. Take it out. But if it's somebody you're doing direct, absolutely put it in and let them know that that's something else that's going to consume your time. So I think item, knowing when to itemize and knowing what to itemize is good. But I, was, I, I would always say, Get rid of that damn home studio fee. That is a that is a big big mistake. Take it out. Yeah, yeah. and then and, you know, editing. I you know I always insist on editing everything myself, and I don't charge for the editing. I'm quick at it. I've I've been doing it all my life. Whether it's on radio with news clips or whatever, you know, and, and making things sound natural. And the other thing I've learned as well is, unless I have been specifically asked for it, I always my 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 audio comes out of the microphone as it is now clean. And I'll always add on um, compression, what I like to call a bit of punch and sparkles and broadcast compression. I will always add that onto my audio um, when I've edited it and normalize it and send it to the client, unless it's been asked for specifically to be clean. Only because I've then gone back thinking, even with production companies, that you think would know better. And they'd have people doing this. And they've done commercials. And I've heard it and thought, wow, I sound flat. God, there's really it's, it's there but it's not just mm. cutting through and i've learned that i always send it like that to give it a kick on the audio because some companies that i've worked with big companies they just haven't done anything to it after they've taken the audio put it there clean on the voiceover on on on, on the music track and done nothing to it so always deliver your your, that, your best you've just audio. <laughs> you've just explained, Philip, why we've never had to touch your audio after you yeah. finish with it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But if you ask it for it clean, it's I'll revealed. give it. I'll give it to you clean, and I'll I'll always keep what I call a raw version of right. my audio, which is edited and ready to be used. And if you come back to me and say, "Can you change that word?" or "This tag's changed," I can go into it and change it within the session without having to redo the whole script. But no one would have an idea that it's been done. That is, likewise, 
Oh, I, I'm sorry, Philip. I was going to say that is that is a, a the reason why I, I stopped you there because I think that is a such a huge tip right there for new people is to save a raw file so that you can go back that you are not trying to mix your voice into a fully you know edited and mastered file because mm. it's just not going to work. <laughs> You're right. And, you know, when, when I've done e-learnings and stuff, I, I, I will go in and I'll, I'll do the changes or maybe a 30 minute file. I'll do the changes and I'll, I'll resave that raw as version two. I will give it the compression it needs and whatever else. And I'll send that whole file to the client or just that section after I've recompressed the whole thing. Because the last thing you want to do is, is, is know and hear that it's been edited or changed. You want the client to think, that it's seamless and they cannot hear the edit. That is the true art of it. If you can't hear the edit, you've achieved it. I love it. I love it. All right. So we got one last question for you, Philip. Thank you so much again. Uh, You're this welcome. This question is uh, uh, my favorite. So he, the question is, if you had to start over again today in voiceover, because we're talking about voiceover, and, and for you, I'm going to say, if you had to start over again today and, and, and voiceover broadcast everything, you, you, you had to start over, you know, without your name, without all the experience and all the accumulated, you know, accolades, what would you do? Wow. What would I do? How do I start? Yeah. Oh, by the way, you do have equipment. So don't have okay. the equipment. I, I, I honestly don't know where i would start yes there's so many online resources yes there's there's so many groups in the uk and around the world that you can learn from i think because i've 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 fallen into a rabbit hole and just kept falling and falling and falling and picking up all this advice and self-training myself and teaching myself whatever else i've got to where i am and it's through luck and determination and not having a clue what i was doing along the way if I was starting out again, I honestly think I'd be overwhelmed by so many sites out there, so much information on do it this way, not that way, but maybe this way. Uh, join this group, not that group. Don't listen to, I, I think sometimes even, even social media on, on Facebook with groups and whatever else can be so uh, disconcerting and can be off-putting and can really steer you in the wrong direction. Yes. And, and, and even make you doubt yourself on, on what you should be doing, not be doing, because this person does it, and that's why you should be doing that and, and following that person. I, I, I would know, in answer to your question, I wouldn't know where to start. I really wouldn't. Um, well, let me, let me I, and maybe I should have said this, you kind of retained your knowledge. <laughs> so like for people out there, you know what I mean? Like from your standpoint, if you started over again, but you know what you know, where would you reckon, like where would you start? I, I would start by, uh, first and foremost, never stop listening to other, 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 other voices. And, and, and even if it's historical voices, you know, from the 1920s on a commercial or the 1980s to today, because that will always keep you learning. And, and, and I would, and I would um, may, maybe join, not so much, social groups are great on Facebook and wherever else, just to, just to, to see what's happening. But I'll also try and, and, and go along to, to voiceover events and masterclasses and sit in and learn and, 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 and make friends. Now there's a big difference between making friends and making people who you're going to just suck the knowledge out of because those people would know straight away. You know, how many people gave you a helping hand instantly and told you everything they knew as opposed to giving you a helping guide right. and you go off and find it yourself. Right. That, that, that's, what I, that's what I would do. And, 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 and have people there to bounce off as well, which are, which are friends in the industry that you can bounce off as opposed to people who will, will see you coming a mile off. That the only time you ever ring them is for what do I have to do on this. How much do I charge? Yeah, that, that's a, I think that's the first time. I mean, that's a great answer because, you know, you, you, you talk about going to approach where, you know, finding the right people, finding the right places to learn from. I love that. I love that. Miles, it's, it's very important. People can see it a mile off. Oh, you know, at least I can. Yeah, listen, I'll, I'll help anyone in, in my industry in broadcasting, voiceover, whatever. But there does come a time when you can tell the people who just want to suck everything out of you. And yes, we've all had helping hands. But at the same time, there comes a point where you need to go and do it yourself. I do. I do find that a lot, too, actually, as I the more I do this. 
So I just seem to get questions where people send me questions with nothing but like a question like they I'm expected to answer <laughs> their question without it, even like a hi or hello. You know, you know what I mean? It, it becomes very kind of demeaning almost. And you can spend your time, you know, being very helpful and helping them. And, and, and you come away thinking, I've just done good then. You know, not in that sort of way, but, you know, I've just helped someone. That's real, that's real nice of me. But they won't even acknowledge you back. Right. Or they'll say, thanks, if they do acknowledge you back. As opposed to, oh, my God, thank you. So, you know, I was, I was wondering about this and whatever, and you really put clarity on it. It's almost as if you were expected to, to, to invest your time in answering someone's email for that. Right. And let's not forget, you know, whether it's broadcasting or voiceovers, we are working in an industry which is a village. We may never have met face to face, may never have spoken or anything else or communicated, but you probably know the voice or you probably one day will come along them or you know someone who knows someone who knows that person. Right. So never burn bridges. That's the best, I think that's the best advice at all, of all. Thank you so much, Miles. Yeah, no, I, I, Philip. You know what? A, what a pleasure it is to to speak with you uh, every every occasion, and, and and particularly here because we've been able to kind of ask you all these these questions and get these insights, and you've shared some really valuable information here that I think is going to be useful to a lot of people. Yeah. So thank you very very much for that for sharing this uh, this with us. I well, think thank that, you to both of you for inviting me on. It's been, it's been a pleasure speaking to you guys and being in your company, and 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 also to to learn from the two of you as well. Um, yeah, you, you've got this great um, um, attitude, Philip, towards relationship, which I think is is golden, and and I think it's so important for everyone because uh, everyone has a sense that the relationship is important. No one's going to say, "No, nah, relationships aren't important." Of course, relationships are important, but but understanding how to how to you know maintain that fragile and very sensitive thing, which is a relationship with lots of different types of people and agendas, there, there's there's something that everyone can learn from each other every time they talk and. And, 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 and when you're saying, you know, starting again, what you're really talking about is, is, is built, rebuilding relationships and, and, and you can't build relationships if you're not prepared to have an exchange. That's what a relationship is. It's a two way street. And, and I, I think that that's fundamentally sound advice for everyone, not even in voiceovers alone, but in everything, Absolutely. Um, but, and, but particularly in voiceovers, because because uh, uh, you know the relationship may very well boil boil down to just you know a conversation. And that's all it took. Mm, absolutely. Hey, Philip, thank you so much for your time. It has been an honor to have you on the show. We really do appreciate it, and I know everybody listening uh, to this is just going to be uh, absolutely uh, blessed with this information. So, thank you so much, Philip. Well, thank you to both of you and, uh, and for your time and also your knowledge in imparting that on me as well. And would love to come back any other time in the future. Just let me know. Oh, well, thank you so much. All right. Thanks, well, you Philip. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, I tell you, I want to thank you so much, Philip and Miles, for an incredible podcast on this Friday afternoon. Thank you all so much. And I wish everybody out there and voiceover land a fantastic weekend. Go get them, get some business, grind it out, and I will see you, well, you'll hear me <laughs> next week. All right, you guys, have a great one. Peace. Peace.